Everyone, there's three questions with Eric Koontz. There we go, man. Even music and <laughs> told you, man. That was good. All right. I, I met Eric actually at a conference in Atlanta. We connected over sh- basketball shoes, right? Yes. Sir. And, uh, yep. and, uh, and then Eric and I just uh, started chatting there. And I don't know. We just started connecting with on Instagram. You're like Instagram famous. You're a little Instagram famous, right? I'm not Instagram famous. You are Instagram famous. No, 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 no. <laughs> and, Eric, and Eric and I just started chatting. And, and one of the things I, I really, truly love about Eric and he is actually, um, he's an ed tech specialist at Price Middle School in Atlanta. You, when I, and maybe, when, maybe I, like, instead of saying Instagram famous, you are totally one of the most positive people on Instagram. And when I see your stuff, I, I feel, that. I feel you always are uplifting and I appreciate that. Like I've never like saw one of your posts and felt worse, only better. And that's, what, that's, why, I, <laughs> that's why I connected with you, man. So yeah, I, I love that about you. Yeah. So, so Eric is actually, as I said, he's an ed tech specialist at Price Middle School. Absolutely inspirational and fam- a little bit famous with Atlanta public school people. They all love you. Right. So I'm excited to have they you do. on the podcast. I love them. And so if you look back at your career and you see, you know, some of the inspirational teachers you worked with, maybe even some that you had, who was a teacher that really inspired you and why? I would say uh, I had an algebra teacher, Coach Morty. Um, Just what he brought to the class is energy his life, um, who he was, his authenticity, um, his willingness to, to kind of like break bears of what a, a, a teacher really should look like or how a teacher should give instruction. Um, I just appreciate him, his relationship with us. That was very important to him. And so, man, he just really changed the way education and teaching looked for me. You know what I'm saying? He made it look fun. Mm-hmm. He made it look cool. And I think a lot of the times that's the struggle that we as teachers have. You know what I'm saying? We kind of, we don't, we don't market you know, instruction well right. sometimes in our classrooms. And I think he really did that. And he just engaged us on so many other levels other than just instruction. And he let us know that we cared and what we were doing, you know, was important. What, what we were here for was important and it meant something. And it meant something to him and you could see that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We have a lot of teachers where, you know, you don't really see what they're teaching means something to them, but you could tell that what he did in the classroom meant something to him and he valued it. So um, that's why, you know, that's that's the teacher who really, kind of changed my outlook on education. And that's why I kind of really got into the okay, classroom. What, what was his name again? Uh, Mort- Mortier, Coach Mortier. I cannot Coach remember Mortier. his first name. And you he, ready for he, the... he taught, what? He's getting a shout out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know that yes. I was coming, did you? No, I did not. I did not, but he was phenomenal, man. He inspired me on so many levels, Love. so. Well, you know, and it's, it's funny because and, and and this is going to maybe show a little bias. Math was really, really hard for me at high school level, right? Mm-hmm. And I, f- I feel sometimes that some of the teachers that I had in that subject were very well-versed. They were very passionate about the subject mm-hmm. because they had a strong knowledge of it, but I didn't necessarily feel they had a passion for the students, right? Like they love mm-hmm. math. And I think, I think there's that combination of both that that really really matters right and especially yes um if you think about like a student that really struggles with math which i was if you you know it's way harder to struggle in a space where you feel the person leading doesn't really care if you're doing sure. well or not do you know what i mean For so sure. that's probably why it resonates so like what was like a like what's something that you maybe do today that was inspired in that class when you're a student is there something that you maybe you know, how, you know, you took from that class as a student that you still do as an educator. Um, I, I, I just something, just check out my students and make it meaningful. You know what I'm saying? And listen, you know, when they're talking, when they're responding, kind of listen to them uh, and respond. I guess respond is based off that, you know what I'm saying? Hear them, right. listen, understand, uh, continue to build connections. Um, when you walk in my, when my students walk by me, Hey, good morning. You good. You all right. You know what I'm saying? I right. don't, I make him feel seen. He had a good way of doing that. He, he was skilled at just making us feel seen. Um, and that's what I make sure of. I make my students feel seen. Cause you don't know what's happening at the house. They may be lacking that void right. at the house. You know what I'm saying? They may be what, what's going on when they leave and come here. Right. And so I make sure the first thing they get, no matter what they're giving me, it's positive energy. You know, I right. care. I love you. So what's up? What's going on? You know? So. I love that. See, th- see, Eric, this is why we connected because <laughs> that, that, that to me is everything, right? I, I, mm-hmm. 
I, I've always said that every time you pass a kid in the hallway, if you don't acknowledge them, that is an opportunity missed, right? That is something very important to me. Absolutely, and yeah. those little connections that you make in the hallway outside of the class, they have such an impact inside of the class, right? That you yes. do, whether you teach it, and it, it's kind of interesting too, right? You, you, you see a kid who you don't teach, you acknowledge them, mm -hmm. you give them a little energy, and how much mm -hmm. better is it for the teacher that they're going into, that they're walking right. in positive, they're uplifted. So it, like a lot of times exactly. we think, unless they're not, unless they're our kid, we don't really care, but it's actually, mm -hmm. no, we're a community. And if I can uplift a kid, send them off to another teacher, to another classroom, and they do better than we all win and how powerful right. that yeah. is, right? So Absolutely. that's why we connect yes. man. I told, I knew yeah. it right away. <laughs> that's, that's it. Yeah. All right. So you, you do a lot of leadership training, you work, you know, with a lot of teachers and I'm sure, um, you've had some really inspiring administrators, principals, you know, in your past. So when you think of like a, an administrator, a leader you had, who's someone who really sticks out in your mind and why? I would say Dr. Denise Cato. Uh, she, she was literally my principal from, let me see, I think it was eighth, eighth, ninth, and then 10th grade. Um, and then when we went to our 11th grade, we went to 11th grade, she went back and she was principal over the freshman building. Right. Uh -huh. um, and for one, um, aesthetically, and judge me later, but I can tell she cared about her job, about, but what, how she showed up every day. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'll say that, right? She showed up, um, she dressed, fashion was top tier, always had a smile on her face, attitude was always positive, um, but she was still no nonsense. And she possessed such a duality that was is even as a high school student, I recognized that. And she was very top tier in her game and education and instruction is very, she was very top tier in her game of fashion. And so then she cared about us. Um, and even the way she dealt with us, she didn't, she wasn't a one size fits all type of principal. Um, she dealt with us really in, on a case by case basis. And we had the privilege of getting to know her for so long. And so she was able to build relationships and I, I value the leaders or the instructional um, my teachers or the administrators and growing up in which I was able to maintain and build relationships because even now to this day, I still maintain a relationship with her. I still call her. She, you know, I still go to her when she's presenting at, you know, presentations. I still log in because it, it just, she, she, was, she, was, she was always valuable. Um, anything she said was valuable. You know, you, you, you hung on to her words, you know what I'm saying? She was that type of principal. And even when she was dealing with me, I wasn't a perfect child. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of right. stuff I got in trouble for were little small things, right? Yeah. So I, I don't know if I should say this on a public forum. Do it. But Do it. You can edit it all. It's terrible. <laughs> her consequences it. for me were, were personalized, right? And so right. when the track was, was to say, yeah, and the track was the literally because of, you know, this, this, and that, now you need to be on your way to you know, the next step, which is, you know, a tribunal. However, no, I know this and I see this in you. And not, this wasn't, this, this wasn't even that, this, you know, that, so let me, let me scale back. Let's have a conversation and let's pick another route. You know what I'm saying? Because who knows right. what that may have, you know, or, or my, the result of that, if she would have did the one size of this, so let's stick to the paperwork in the paper trail and let's keep right. moving, you know, and get your body. And so she was that type of administrator. Um, and she, and she fought for you. She, she affirms you. She, she validated you. You know, she made you once again, she made you feel like somebody who was important, who the next generation or the generation, you know, after you, um, would need, you know what I'm saying? And so I appreciate that with her. Um, like, and she always showed up and that's she, when I say always showed up, she was very consistent with showing up. And so when you build a consistency of showing up, you learn yeah. to trust that person. And that's what I did. I, I, I was able to trust her. And that's been my girl ever since. We've been rocking it tight, you know. Is she going to be listening <laughs> right now? Is she going to be listening right now, you think? You got to send Is she going to, to be listening? I'm not yeah, sure, but I will. Yeah. <laughs> I will. She's, uh, she's going to be excited about this. <laughs> <laughs> so shout out. I love it. Okay. So yes. there's a couple of things I, I loved about what you just said. Uh, mm -hmm. The first one, I know that this is going to maybe sound ridiculous. I used to get just maybe, I don't know if tease was the right word, but when I was a teacher or when I was a principal, I dressed up, I wore a shirt and tie every day, you know, like it was important to me. And I used to get, and if, if I know this sounds weird, it kind of felt like a little superhero. Like I put on like the superhero outfit and right. it like, it helped me kind of ship. Now I'm not you, you, anybody who's listening to this, you dress the way you want something like that. 
but it was helpful mm -hmm. to me through that process. But it, the one thing that I, I used to get, you know, like, oh, you're, you know, you don't dress like, like the kids. You can't relate to somebody in a, a, like a suit and tie and stuff like that. And my belief was I actually want them to see that someone in a suit and tie can relate to them that they can connect with them, exactly. that me wearing yes. the suit and tie doesn't actually doesn't make me what? unrelatable, right? And so it's mm -hmm. it, it, that was a really, so I, I really appreciate that you shared that because mm -hmm. I felt that, you know, that was a standard I had for myself when I showed up, you know, and I'm wearing a, you know, Raptors hoodie right now. So like podcast <laughs> me a little yeah. different when I, you know, when I taught and was an admin, but that was really important to me because, mm -hmm. you know, I, I felt that it, it, it switched something for me when I would put mm -hmm. on, you know, a suit and tie, you know, when I go to work. But the other thing, too, that you said, and I was actually watching something yesterday about like a, it was on the news and it was like the response to a kid, the, the district said, well, we did this response based on the handbook. I'm like that, like your handbook is so like that if kid does A, here's consequence A. And like, right. we don't talk to the kid. We don't have, like, we don't know the kid. We don't know their situation. We don't like that to me really struggles. Right. So really, mm -hmm. and this is what I love about this. I guarantee you 100%. She didn't just personalize the consequences to you, but personalize the consequences mm -hmm. to every kid that she actually interacted That's, with. Right. It wasn't sure. like she, had, you were her favorite. And then all of a sudden, but, but she always, you know, she always had that gift of making sure that you felt that you, you weren't necessarily your favorite, but you always felt special and how mm -hmm. powerful that is. Right. And even, even well, when I was, a, even, I was a favorite. <laughs> okay, there you go. Well, obviously you're still connected. Right? <laughs> right. I wonder how many people say the exact same thing. I love that. So, yeah. <laughs> so I just, I think that's a really powerful way. Like when you're, you know, I, there's sometimes there's a lot of conversation about suspensions being bad and I, I don't mm -hmm. agree. I, I don't agree. Sometimes based on the situation, the sp suspension is a good thing. It's and needed. sometimes, yeah. so I used to do this. I know I, I've talked about this before. Sometimes I would do, you're like, you got to go, you got you're, you need three days out of here. That's how it is. Mm -hmm. Right. But I know it's not like, Oh, that you did this. Here's this. Right. So I'm like reading stuff and I know what's going on. Right. Some days when I would suspend a kid, I'm like, you got, you're going to be suspended for five days in my office. We're going to be besties for the next five days. And like, we're, we're like, we're going to be around each other and right. we're going to build a relationship and all that other stuff. And it was always, uh, it was always like understanding the whole, like we talk about this too. Sometimes, you know, kids got to know there's certain boundaries to this. And there's a lot of conversation about discipline in schools right now and stuff like that too that we just kind of go to these extremes where like every kid suspended all the time for anything that they do to like, no. And it's like, no, the, the answer is typically somewhere in that middle where we figure this, but the middle always is who is the kid in front of you? What's going on? What's something mm -hmm. happened? And so I just, I so appreciate that how you said that was personalized because um, <laughs> if it, I feel like if it wasn't, it probably would have led you in a, you know, and me in a worse situation where you, do, when Absolutely. you don't feel cared about, then that's when you start, that's when you start really doing crappy stuff. Right. I, and it's funny again, why we connected. I was a rotten <laughs> kid too. I used to get in trouble all the time too. Right. Right. But, I love that. But crazy there's things. Actually, there's this, um, there, I got to tell you the story. There is a principal who I used to get in trouble with and I'll never forget this. I used to get in trouble with, a lot. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, he's a very nice man, but I, I was a troublemaker. And, uh, and then, uh, he was about 15, 20 years later, I'm speaking at a conference. Right. And he's there. Mm -hmm. He, and so here's this kid who used to get in trouble with him all the time. Who's now like giving advice on how he should lead. Right. <laughs> and it was like, oh, I'm like, oh my God, this guy like knows everything about me. Like he knows like every dirty, dark secret I had from when I was a kid. And he came up, he's like, I remember him talking to me and I was like, oh, I won't say his name, but I'm like, I'm so embarrassed. He's like, what are you talking about? You're mm -hmm. awesome. You're awesome. Right. You're like, you did kid stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I was like, and he made me feel so much better. Right. Cause I used to get in trouble. Right. And then he said, I'll never forget this. He said, do you remember when you got in a fight 
with that science teacher in class. Do you remember that? I said, yeah. He goes, you were right. <laughs> I was like, I knew it. I knew I was right. <laughs> like, oh. so he, he, back up, he had to back up the teacher in the situation. And I was yeah, like, right, I knew right, it. Right. I, so I was like, <laughs> I love that. That was so funny. So yeah, that, that just made my day. Cause I didn't bring it up. He did. He's like, like he remembered right. that. I was like, I knew it. I knew I was right. So I love it. <laughs> such, a, such a great, uh, you know, shout out to, to, you know, sorry, doctor, it's Dr. Denise Cato, who, who? Dr. Lise Cato. So Dr. Cato, Denise, uh, so. Dr. Denise Cato, I, I, I mm -hmm. so, so many lessons that obviously Eric takes with him today. So now you look back sure. at your whole career, you look back mm -hmm. at what you're doing today, you know, some of the things that you, you know, you go through as an educator, but if you could talk to your first year teacher self, what advice would you give to, you know, first year teacher, Eric? Um, just to show up the best way you know how consistently to show up um, every time. And I think a lot of times as educators, we are, we get afraid because we're supposed to be the masters of instruction, the masters of teaching and masters of communication that we're afraid to fail in that area. Um, but I think, of course, when you, when something is, when you're in a, a, a season or a trail, you know, of trying to innovate or trying to create or, you know, trying, just trying, period, you're going to fail and that's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. And so um, you, you cannot be afraid to do that. However, you have to do your best to show up consistently. So at the end of the day, when you do fail, and I want to be careful when I say it's okay, but it's okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because you, you've done your best. You, you you're you're consistent in what you do and what you're doing um but just be consistent and show up execute i um, mean execute with excellence and that and it that may it may not be perfect every time and that's okay right. but one thing is you just have to continue to put that best foot forward um, i think i was really hard on myself um as a first year teacher i didn't you know i feel like i didn't know a lot you know what i'm saying but i i studied i i, I continue to you know i've researched continue to right. um you know, excel in my craft, I continue to grow, I continue to look for things that I can improve on. Um, for the most part, nobody had to tell me first, you know, where I needed to kind of correct, you know what I'm saying? Even though it happened, you know, you have the people who support you um, and, and, you know, and, and critique you and not, not, I want to say, I'm using, all, I feel like I'm using all the word, wrong words, but still criticize, but, you know, within, right. within, you know, rationale and reason, right? You still have that, but um, just to show up consistently and forgive yourself, don't be too hard on yourself. Um, and it's, it's always passing over skill set. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, continue to make sure that you're passionate. Always check. We always know this. Always check your why of why you're doing it. Why are you doing this? Have you forgotten about that? Um, let the main thing still be the main thing. You know what I'm saying? And that's it's always about these kids and these scholars. When it starts to be about something else, then you might have to reassess yourself, reassess why you're here and why you're in this right. career. Well, they, you know, it's funny. It's funny what you just said. The right before, so I just, finished my workout had you know, my, my lunch and then popped on here. Uh, but before I actually saw, um, a video with Inky Johnson, we were actually talking a little bit about Inky Johnson before, and he said something that really stuck with me. He's like, basically, and, and I'm paraphrasing here and the video will be linked down in the description down below. So you can get the actual thing. Cause I know I'll never say it as well as Inky Johnson, but basically he said, mm -hmm. like, you have to detach yourself from the emotion of the end result and focus on loving the process. And that, that, oh, that, like, that, that, that is so important to actually go through that, that if you don't actually fall in love with the process and then, you know, as you kind of share with Dr. Cato yourself, that focus on consistency, um, mm -hmm. then, and you're so emotionally attached to what is the end result of this, then sometimes, you know, you, you, you lose that passion. And, you know, the, the thing that's really important is that, Skill set is something that I truly believe can be taught in many aspects, but passion, Absolutely. passion that's, is not, that's, you. yeah, that's it's tough. You, right? okay. Yeah. That's you. Yeah. And so that, that to me, like if you're, so I will take someone who's passionate, who's willing to learn. That's a really important aspect. Who's willing to learn mm -hmm. and grow over someone who has, you know, a high skill level, doesn't want to learn, you know, and mm -hmm. maybe has lost that, you know, excitement for, what they do every day, because eventually the person with passion is going to surpass them, right? It might take right, a little while, right. but they're, they're going to continue to grow. So I, I love that advice. So mm -hmm. Eric, this is your first podcast. You seem like a pro doing pretty amazing. Oh, so appreciate it. <laughs> I love it. So I'm so glad we get to, this. Is one of my favorite things about this podcast is, you know, connecting mm -hmm. with people that I meet, you know, different places and just being able to sit down and chat. So it's just like yes. hanging out with a friend. So uh, Eric, um, 
loved having you on everyone make sure you follow eric on instagram he's already pretty famous so oh. he's giving a heads up right so but <laughs> is he is tons of positivity you're gonna love him but eric thanks so much for being on the podcast thank you everyone appreciate for you for having me